Hi, thanks for joining us for a special episode of History in Art. I'm Steve Doss, pastor of Higher Ground Outreach, and I've got a very special guest with me today, a man with an awesome vision, a visionary that's had an adventure of a lifetime over the past 10 years. We're going to discuss that vision he's had, and we're also going to be showing um, a one-hour documentary on his very first project that he had with uh, uh, Janina Cantemir, uh, a Romanian artist who had such a talent and beautiful work she's done, uh, paintings of Edward Curtis photographs. We we're talking about uh, uh, paintings of all of the California missions, and ev uh, there's been so many different projects they've worked on, but the main project that we're going to be talking about today in the in the last portion of the program is is the work that she has done with the Alaskan churches the 105 Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska so without any further ado I want to introduce you to my very special guest today Roger Pike hi Steve hi Roger yeah how did you ever get started on a journey like this well Steve it was totally unexpected uh, one day I, I'd lived most of my life in Alaska, had been in, in native arts and crafts where I would travel to the villages up north uh, and, and purchase handicrafts from the Eskimos, their carvings, mukluks, w baskets, whatever it was that they, were, that they were doing. And I had a wholesale operation out of Anchorage, and then I would wholesale to uh, various gift shops around the state. I had 162 accounts. And one day I was in the bank, and the the uh, fellow working the bank saw me in in line. I was just waiting for a teller to open, and he says, "Roger, Roger, come here." So I walked over there, and he was standing there with two gentlemen in suits, hmm. and he says, "Would you talk to these fellows and see if you can help them?" And it turned out they were from. <clears throat> Moscow, and they were looking for someone that would purchase product for him. This was just after the wall came down, uh, early 90s. Uh, it'd been down for a while, but uh, we went in and sat in the conference room and we talked. and They explained to me what they wanted to do and what they were looking for, and 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 asked me if I would be interested. And I I says, let me have a day or two to think it over and. And uh, I just might be. It sounds like quite an opportunity and, and something that could be very exciting in mm -hmm. places that I've never been. Uh, I've always had a great interest in, in the Russian culture from Alaska. Uh, but uh, so I did. I thought over and we got back together and we formed a, a relationship. And then later on we formed a, a joint little corporation and I would go out and purchase product for them, mm -hmm. okay. and it turned into quite a quite a big business. And we would ship container loads of mostly food, uh, some clothing to Russia, and then they brought me to Russia to help set up some stores over there. And one day I was I was sitting. I had a day just to myself, and I went up to Red Square. And mm. I was sitting there, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I was sitting there looking at the, uh, at the Kremlin, thinking, how did an old farm kid from Minnesota end up sitting here? I was just, you know, you reflect the past, and we used to have drills where we'd get under our desk in school because we are going to be bombed by Russia, and here I am sitting right there watching the changing of the guard at Lenin's tomb. And and as I sat there, I sat there for oh, several hours. Uh, I'd look over to my left was St. Basil's Cathedral. Beautiful cathedral. And I, I got to wondering how did a, a church of that magnitude stand right next to the Kremlin, some of the most brutal dictators the world has ever seen, and and that church, which represents God, that's what I think of when I see a church. Mm -hmm. And these mm -hmm. people had no belief whatsoever uh, along those lines. And I, 
I was just running it through my mind, and it was just like a light went off. Uh, you can call it what you want. A vision appeared, uh, but I I was consumed with this idea that somebody ma needs to make note of the Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska. Because I'd flown into many of the villages, and that's usually the first thing you see when you're in a little airplane sitting there in the cockpit, and you see these little uh, uh, buildings, but always there's the church. It's, yeah. it's painted, it's beautiful, well-kept, mm -hmm. and uh, they're Russian Orthodox. And it was, it, it, during this time, it was like, Roger, you've got to make note of all these churches. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, how would I, I don't even know how or I'd start to do something like that. And, but it was planted in my mind. And I, oh, that evening, it was probably four or five o'clock in the afternoon, I walked down and, and around the corner of St. Basil's Church. And there was a fellow standing there, Steve, with a painting about this big. Mm -hmm. And it was St. Basil's Church. And he walked up to me. And he went just like that in front of my face. <laughs> and I looked at it, and it was like a, it was a confirmation of what That's had what just happened to, to me. That's what you were supposed to do. And I didn't understand any of this. This yeah. was, I didn't know. I didn't understand what was happening. Wow. And so I went about my business, and uh, the ruble had collapsed. Uh, oh, a year or two later, and, and uh, we we're no longer able to buy product out of the United States and ship it to to uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. And I started a little wholesale business on my own and and uh, built it up. I had two or three stores. and But this idea about these churches never left. And I one day uh, I... Ended my business with the with the wholesale operation, and a fellow that was a friend of mine says, "Roger, you know what you ought to do." He says, "You like to get around the country and see things." He says, "You ought to try this expediting." Mm -hmm. He says, "You get yourself a little truck and you sign up with a company and you go and you deliver packages all over the United States and they dispatch you." They pay you a dollar a mile, and you can see the country, and you need to do something like that. And yeah. I thought, well, I'll check into that. It really yeah. sounds interesting. So I went up to uh, Ohio to a company called Panther, and they hired me, uh, put me in a truck, and I was an expediter. And all of a sudden, I had all this time to get on the laptop and research these churches. So it's almost like an av a divine appointment. Well, you know, today it, I believe that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. At the time, I was still bewildered. <laughs> 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 I thought, but but the feeling was so strong. Yeah. And I thought, well, maybe we can find an artist and have these churches painted. Mm -hmm. And I looked in Russia and I, nothing came there. I got on the computer, and I Googled Romanian artists. And here I find this artist uh, through a friend mm -hmm. and was mm -hmm. referred from the friend to her. So I sent her an email, and she emailed me back, and I explained what I would like to do, and she was very interested. And she had... Uh, uh, attended uh, she she graduated second highest in the history of the art school in Romania mm -hmm. for ever, I mean wow. just a uh, and it had been painting since she was 6 years old and and it established herself somewhat as an artist in Romania mm -hmm. and so she sent I I sent her a couple pictures and she painted them and that's how it started and then we got as we get in more into the project, I begin to see what a what a talented artist she was. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we started the project on the churches, all 105 of them. She painted all 105 of those churches. 
in approximately seven years. And then she did the uh, the Saints, mm -hmm. and we worked together on that. Uh, had no idea, really, where what we're going to do with these paintings when they're done, Steve. Right. I, but I was so gung ho to do them. Mm -hmm. Here, eight years or seven years in that truck, there was eleven nights I didn't sleep in the truck, and I would be out in the middle of Nebraska in a Walmart parking lot, and I'd say, Roger, what in the world are you doing? <laughs> this is the craziest thing you've ever done in your life. Because I didn't really know why I was doing it, right. but the passion was there. Right. And every right. time I would, we would email her a list of churches, and every time 15 of them were done, she would send them someplace to me in the United States, and I'd pick them up. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. I just couldn't wait. It was like discovering a gold mine every time. I mean, that's how excited I would be just to get the pictures, right. the paintings. Right. And it, it was an obsession. Yeah. But I think it was meant to be an obsession. So let me ask you, because I want to make sure we we got about eight minutes left here. Uh-huh. Your, your uh, vision of the project when you began the journey. Yes. And your vision of the project now. How's that changed? Well, let me sum it up like this, Steve. It was the greatest spiritual experience of my life. Nothing has ever compared to it. And I went to Sunday school when I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. But nothing made God so real as as this journey that I was on. Yeah. Uh, totally changed my life. Uh, just just an incredible journey. And I believe that that as I look back, I went to Alaska in 1965. Mm -hmm. I lived in uh, a couple native villages, was fascinated, I don't understand why, with the Russian culture and the Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska. Mm. I used to go sit in a village at, at, a, at a church that was, the whole village was uh, abandoned. But I'd crawl up in that belfry and, and sit there for hours looking out over the ocean and all hand-hewed logs. I mean, it was built in the 1800s. Beautiful structure. But I was fascinated with that. And I think all of these th little things led up to doing this project. Yeah. And And it had never been done. So many people had no idea that there were that many churches in Alaska and now there's a historical record, uh, the book that you helped me with, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and and it it tells the the history of the Russian Orthodox, the the churches, uh, and it's uh, set for publication now. Yeah. And when that was finished, Steve, we. Uh, we did the California missions, mm -hmm. and that we, the reason we did that is there was one of the one of the saints, Saint Peter the Aleut, had been taken with the uh, uh, hunters, the Russian hunters, to California and was in that mission. And following the history, well, there we are. There's 21 missions, and we just decided that we would do those to put into the history of it because there was a, a, a connection a, a between strong connection. Yeah. 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 So that's how we ended up doing the, the twenty one missions of California. Mm. And we're in the process now of doing a book on that, uh with the with the history of it and all the paintings of of uh Janina Cantemir. And in my in my wholesale business I would I had a strong in interest in Edward Curtis. Mm -hmm. And I've had mm -hmm. oh, four, maybe five original manuscripts, books, the original ones, in my lifetime, bought and sold. And I thought how unique it would be because Edward Curtis went to Alaska in 1928, his last mission or expedition, and he photographed the Eskimo in their natural environment. And I thought how, how historic it would be to reproduce that and leave that for Alaska 
for the museums or a large corporation, somebody, right, where they right. could where they could see this uh, and the public could view it and and have a better understanding of the native people of Alaska because they're truly a wonderful people. Yeah, you know, they are. So they are. So one thing has led led to another, to another and and now, uh, lastly, we're we're thinking about t making a trip to Israel and and painting the footsteps of Christ maybe in 20 30 paintings something like that of where Christ traveled and and somehow I see that as a finish point I'm 72 years old now and and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's a lot more projects <laughs> in me but <laughs> but I really want to do that yeah. I want to yeah because this has been such an interesting journey uh uh, there's such a story to tell here, and and I thank and you for taking the time. And you know, maybe a short history on Edward Curtis, because you know, when he started, he looked at um, the natives of America as being a dying race. Right. And his vision began in Alaska and ended in Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. And a uh, very prominent artist, late 1800s, yeah. early 1900s. Yeah, had been to the White House. Uh, some of his photographs, Princess Angeline, Chief Seattle's daughter, mm -hmm. won several awards. Uh, Edward Curtis himself built his first camera when he was 12 years old. Yeah, uh, he traveled to the reservations and to the to the camps of the Native Americans with his father, who was a missionary. So he would go with his dad to all these places, mm -hmm. and that's where mm -hmm. his interest developed in doing the filming. and And he he. It, I, I mean, it, it's so wonderful that he did this and left us with all these beautiful images and photographs of the Native American people. Yeah. Because they're a yeah. wonderful people. They're a strong, prideful, uh, and we get to see that in his work. Exactly. And he has become one of the most sought-after artists in the world. There's galleries all over the world of his. And uh, just a just an interesting... Uh, part of part of our culture awesome now i don't know in two minutes if you can tell the story last summer you took a, a truckload of merchandise related to the first project the alaskan churches and i mean your truck was almost popping a wheelie you had so much in it when you went to sitka saint michael's church we got about two minutes. What? What? Tell me a little bit about that story when you met the deacon. I met uh, Deacon Larry, and I just put a. We had had uh, merchandise set up for gift shops, and and St. Michael's has their own. I'd put the the merchandise in. The next day, I come back to see if everything was okay. The lady in the store says, "Roger, Deacon Larry would like to speak to you." And I thought, "Oh boy, what have I done now?" So I went over to the church. Mm -hmm. In the foyer is a bench, and here's Deacon Larry. He's got his hat, the formal robe, and the long gray beard. He's an elderly man, the wire rim glasses. And he says, Roger, would you sit down, please? And I sat down, and <coughs> I didn't know what was coming, Steve. Mm. He takes his hand, he puts it on my arm like this, and he says, Roger, I want to tell you a story. He says, about 40, 45 years ago, Bishop Gregory came up to Alaska from San Francisco, and we set out to photograph all the churches of Alaska, all 105 of them. We got in the 40s, and we had to stop. And he reached over, and he goes like this, Steve. And he says, you know, Roger, for 45 years, I've been praying someone would come along and finish this job. Steve, I had tears running down my eyes. Mm. Because if ever there's, you know, we all, when, when, when something is in the spiritual realm, we all want confirmation. Yes. You know? Yeah. We're, we're the doubting Thomases. And, yeah. and if ever I had confirmation that that, was, that was meant to be done, that was that it was right it. there. Yeah. You are in for an adventure of a lifetime. I want to show you 105 Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska.
first missionaries traveled to Alaska with explorer Virtues Bering, who formally declared Alaska and the Aleutian Islands in 1741. For the next 50 years, together with exploration and economic development of this new Russian territory, the first attempts were made to bring the Orthodox faith to the Alaska natives. The first formal Orthodox mission to America arrived in Kodiak on September 24, 1794. The mission was made up of eight monks, two laymen, and ten Alaska natives who were taken to Russia by Gregory Chalikov in 1786. This was the beginning of the history of this great land, leading to one of the most unique church groupings in the world. For the rest of this presentation, you will hear the story of a Romanian artist commissioned by a man with a vision and 105 Alaskan churches. In the summer of 1741, an expedition led by Virtus Bering and Alexei Cherikov discovered and mapped Kodiak Island. The first colonists were led by those maps over 40 years later. After Bering's discovery, Russia's maritime fur trade quickly developed, proving to be a very lucrative enterprise lasting over a hundred years. In 1784, fur trader Gregory Shalikov established the first permanent Russian settlement in Alaska at Three Saints Bay near today's village of Old Harbor. The settlement was then moved to what is now Kodiak in 1792, which remained the capital of Alaska for 15 years and became the center of the Russian fur trade. I spent most of my life in Alaska and I had a, a wholesale business there, and I dealt primarily in native art, Eskimo, native, uh, mm -hmm. the Clinkett, Athabascan, and uh, did that for some, oh, 30 years. And one day I, I had uh, taken a trip to Russia and I was I was sitting in uh, in Red Square at the Kremlin, and as I was looking around there, I sat on a bench just by myself. Beautiful sunny day, mm -hmm. and I looked at that wall, and I uh, they still had the guards in front of Lenin's tomb, and they would change the guard, and and uh, but to my left was Saint Basil's Church, and 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 right in front of me was the Kremlin, and I would look at that church and I would look at that wall and I'd think how how did one of the most evil empires in the world that that had had no faith in anything but themselves let those churches stand like that I mean it was beautiful mm. and I and and it reminded me as I was thinking of the days when I would fly into the villages in Alaska You'd be sitting up there in the cockpit, and you'd you'd be be nearing the village, and the first thing you would see is that church. Uh, usually the blue domes or the green domes, but yeah. it just stood out, and there was such a beautiful sight in some of the most remote, uh, desolate areas of the world. Here, out there, in a little village, was this beautiful church, and I thought. You know, somebody should should do something to to bring this to the to attention. Um, to, it, to me, it was miraculous that they were there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, it was like a, a light went off in my head while I was sitting there. I need to find somebody to to paint those churches. 
Yeah. And I dealt with artists in Alaska and, and, and had some Russian painters that, that worked for me. Uh, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's what I need to do. Well, over the next oh, few years, I did various things and uh, moved down to uh, Mississippi and then to Arkansas. And it was during the time in Arkansas that I, uh, that feeling was so strong. And I, I had a business there and uh, I, I sold the business and I, I was thinking of a way that I could, could, could get those paintings uh, done. And so I got on the internet and I, uh, through searching the internet, I, I met a, a girl in Romania that was interested in, in doing the paintings. Uh, Georgina Cantemir was, is her name. And she, from just an early age, had uh, just a desire to paint. And, and she started painting when she was approximately six years old and all through school. Uh, and was selected uh, for scholarships uh, to study art. Uh, she got her doctorate in art. When I met her, she was teaching art. And uh, through correspondence on the internet, uh, I asked if she would be interested in, in working on this project. It was a big project. And she was very interested in doing it. Mm. So we worked out a an agreement between us, and I took a took a job driving truck all over the United States, doing doing expediting, where I'd carry uh, cargo that had to be delivered overnight, cargo that was uh, had to have somebody with it all the time, and and I did that, but I would I might be in Chicago and have two three days, I would get on the internet. I would look up the the, the churches, and, and that's how our rapport bi began to build. And I would uh, send those to her, and she would then uh, paint the paintings. And when she got a group of them together of 10 or 15, we would figure out a place to send them to me, because at that time I was living in the truck. And all of the revenue from the truck, would go into this project. Mm. And this went on for approximately <coughs> six, six or seven years it took for her to complete this. Yeah, and, and, and now here we have the truck, and this is a typical truck that's used for the expediting business. Usually you have room for anywhere from, oh, two to four pallets. This truck will take four pallets. Uh, <clears throat> then you have your sleeping area up here uh, because a lot of times you're you're on the road and you can pull over and catch a little a little nap in between your uh, your loads but you're completely self-sufficient you've got uh, 110 we we'll always carry a little generator we have uh, converters that convert the the power from the batteries to 110. We've got a little heater, mattress, fan, and then for the real hot weather, I've got a little uh, electric air conditioning unit that sits here that exhausts through the window. And then this was home for seven years. You know, you just get where, where this space just becomes all you need. You just adjust to it. St. Herman was a Russian Orthodox monk and missionary to Alaska, which was then part of Russian America. His gentle approach and disciplined life earned him the love and respect of both native Alaskans and Russian colonists. He is considered by many Orthodox Christians as the patron saint of America. St. Juvenali was a member of the first group of Orthodox missionaries to evangelize the native inhabitants of Alaska. He was martyred while evangelizing among the Yupik Eskimos on the mainland of Alaska in 1796. 
Peter de Aliud, a native of Kodiak Island, was martyred for his faith while on a hunting expedition to California in 1815. He is said to have received his Christian name Peter when he was baptized into the Orthodox faith by the monks of St. Herman missionaries operating in the north. St. Innocent of Alaska was a Russian Orthodox missionary priest and the first Orthodox bishop and archbishop in the Americas. Remembered for his missionary work, scholarship, and leadership in Alaska and the Russian Far East during the 19th century, he is known for his abilities as a scholar, a linguist, and administrator, as well as having a great zeal for his work. St. Jacob, known as the Enlightener of Alaska, was a native of the Aleutian Islands who became a priest of the Orthodox Church and continued the missionary work of St. Innocent among his and other Alaskan people. The parish of the Nativity of Our Lord celebrates more than 150 years. Its true roots were started through the work and prayers of St. Herman of Alaska. The community of Uzinki is a rival of the community that St. Herman left Kodiak to minister to. In the 1800s, due to an epidemic, the village there, Monk's Lagoon, was moved to Pestrakoff Beach and then to the current site of the village of Uzinki. The first Orthodox mission to Alaska arrived in St. Paul Harbor, which is now Kodiak, in the fall of 1794. Although construction of a church was commenced late that year, it was not completed until 1796 and reconstructed for the fifth time somewhere between 1945 and 1949. The church is a Kodiak landmark and the oldest Orthodox parish in the state. This painting is of the Third Holy Resurrection Church building constructed in the 19th century. Its predecessor was either raised late in 1873 or the beginning of 1874. The new building was constructed over the course of six years with the main altar not consecrated until August of 1880. This chapel located in St. Herman Theological Seminary, is a replica of the first Orthodox Church built in North America in 1794, but not completed until 1796. Established as a pastoral school in 1972, the seminary now provides a number of educational programs to prepare students for work in the Orthodox Church as readers, choir directors, church school teachers, and clergy. St. Alexander Nevsky Chapel is a historic chapel in Akutan. The previous church was constructed in 1878 when the village was established. That church had a hipped roof sheltering both nave and sanctuary and a small gable-roofed vestibule. The building was sided with clapboards in the early 1800s Akutan's population was 63 Aleuts and two Whites. Alexander Nevsky Chapel was built in 1918 to replace the original structure and added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. As one of the oldest Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska, the Holy Ascension Church as it stands today was built in 1896. The structure was restored in 1996. The interior is from the original chapel, with the exception of the lower level of the bell tower. The current cathedral is the fourth church built for the Unalaska Parish. Kakanak is located on the south shore of Lake Iliamna, 22 miles south of Iliamna and 88 miles northeast of King Salmon. The old Kakanak village site was located two and a half miles down the beach from the present village. The first Russian Orthodox chapel at the old site was constructed in 1898. This painting depicts the church at the current village site as it appears in 2006. St. Herman Church, built in 1987, stands in the small village of Larson Bay. 
which according to the 2000 census boasts a grand population of 115. Situated in a scenic valley six miles southwest of the city of Kodiak, Larson Bay is at the very center of commercial and sport fishing activity in the Kodiak Island's west side. After the village of Afognak was damaged for the 1964 tsunami, the Lions Club International and the Bureau of Indian Affairs assisted the village to relocate and establish the new village of Port Lyons in Settlers Cove on the north end of Kodiak Island. The church used the name of the original church in Afognak, and the church's icons and royal doors were incorporated in the new building. The Church of the Holy Great Martyr St. George the Victorious Orthodox Church is a historic Russian Orthodox Church in St. George Island, Alaska. The first chapel on the island was built in 1833 and replaced in 1861. The second chapel was in turn replaced by a church built about five miles away in 1875 to 1876. The current church, constructed beside and to the south of the 1875 church, was completed in 1936. This 1905 church is the oldest building on the island of St. Paul. The church's separate elements, sanctuary, nave, narthex, vestibule, and bell tower, are clearly expressed on the exterior in a harmonious composition, and the interior features an elaborate mahogany iconostas. In contrast with their housing, which was supplied by the government, the church was commissioned by the natives and remains an important expression of Russian Orthodox-influenced Aleut culture. As the oldest Russian Orthodox church still in use in Alaska, the Church of Karluk also exhibits an unusual architectural sophistication with its pedimented Greek Revival doorway and distinctive belfry. Traditional elements of Alaskan Russian Orthodox churches, such as division of space, axial alignment, and octagonal cupola, are also found in this pristine church built by a cannery in 1888 for its native workers. The Bering Church Chapel was originally built on a site overlooking the Davis Lake Warehouse area by the United States Army Corps of Engineers in 1944. It was moved to its present location on Bering Hill by the CBs and civilians of Navy Public Works Department in September of 1953. A cemetery surrounds the old St. Nicholas Russian Orthodox Church in the village of Kwethluk. A Yupik village on the Kwethluk River, just upstream from the Kuskwim River in western Alaska. Kwethluk has been a settlement since prehistoric times. Prospectors came during the gold rush, but most left by 1911. One placer deposit was worked until 1940. The church was established in 1912, this building dating to 1935. This 1953 church, although somewhat lower and wider in proportions than earlier churches, has the same elements of separate sanctuary, nave, and bell tower that identify it as an Alaskan Russian Orthodox Church. The city has a history as storied as the landscape itself. The Aleut people first settled near here more than 7,000 years ago. The city's population, which is mostly native, still honor many of the traditions of their forefathers, and unlike most tourist destinations, they eagerly share them when asked, explaining the songs and dance that are passed on to this day by village elders. The first mention of a Woody Island Chapel in church records is a register from 1868, which states that the Chapel of Annunciation was built that year by the American Ice Company. Later registers changed the construction date to 1869. It was rebuilt by local residents in 1893, though records don't state whether it was built on the same site. 
The latter building was constructed of boards and had room for 100 people. The island is small, nestled at the northern entrance of Chignac Bay, just two miles from the city of Kodiak. The protection of Theodokos Chapel is a historic Russian Orthodox chapel on Kodiak Island in the village of Akiok that was built in 1926. Carpenters from Altec Packing Company constructed the building. The Altec Packing Company, headquartered in Bellingham, Washington, but active in this area, donated the church. The building remains essentially as it was constructed, with the nave, sanctuary, and bell tower reading as separate elements on the exterior. It is not the first church on the site. Previous churches were named Holy Trinity. The first church was established in 1881. At that time, the village had a population of 114 Eskimos. Kangiganak, historically settled by the Yupik Eskimos, is located on the west shore of the Kuskwim Bay. It was permanently settled in the 1960s when former residents of Quichalingak sought higher ground in search of relief from floods. The chapel at Afognak was built at the expense of the Russian-American Company in 1843 in an effort to foster a sense of community between longtime Afognak residents and the people who had recently been relocated there under the company's village consolidation program. Creel and Merchant Karatornov was credited with replacing the chapel with the new building in 1869. When the Afognak parish became a separate entity in 1896, the chapel there was redesignated a church. In 1905, this small building was converted for use as a parish school and sanctuary, and a new, larger church of the Nativity of the Theodokos, complete with a cupola and bell tower, was built nearby. The Nikolsky Church is well composed, with gable roof sanctuary and narthex flanking a hip-roofed nave, the interior has a remarkable amount of carving, distinguishing this church among Alaskan Russian Orthodox churches. The original chapel at the site was a log house with an earthen roof built in 1889. It was donated by Toyan Pavel Maximov for the church's use, and its altar was consecrated in August of 1894. In the fall of 1895, Father Loan Orlov added onto the church, increasing its length by two-thirds. By 1902, the building had deteriorated to the point that it was not considered to be repairable. A new three-cupola church built of stout timber was consecrated on July 1905. It's well known for the role it plays in the local community surrounding it and contains its original iconostasis and many original 19th century icons. Like many of today's centers of population in the Aleutians, King Cove was populated by a consolidation of area villages and by the presence of Euro-American commercial activity first in the fur trade and later in salmon and codfish fishing and processing. One such entrepreneur and community's namesake, Robert King, settled in the present-day village site with an Aleut wife from the neighboring village of Belkovsky in the 1880s. It was founded in 1911 when Pacific American Fisheries built a salmon cannery in the area. Its presence was impetuous for its settlement by Scandinavian and German fishermen, as well as local area Aleut. A Russian Orthodox church was built in Pilot Station early in the 1900s and is one of the oldest structures in the region. R.H. Sargent of the U.S. Geological Survey first noted the village name of Pilot Station in 1916. Local riverboat pilots who use the village as a checkpoint were responsible for this name. The community incorporated as a second-class city in 1969. The 
current church, Transformation of Our Lord Church, was established in 1955. Settlement of the Bristol Bay region first occurred over 6,000 years ago. Yupik Eskimos and Athabascan Indians jointly occupied the area. The Aleuts arrived in later years. Local natives were originally contacted by Russians between 1818 and 1867. The town developed around a cannery in early 1900s. During the influenza outbreak beginning in 1918, natives from other villages moved to Igakik in an attempt to isolate themselves from the disease. St. Sophia Church was founded in 1968 and rebuilt in 2011. Alaska natives in this area have a long Christian history, in part from Russian Orthodox, Catholic, and Moravian influence. As in many Alaska native villages, Christian tradition has become interwoven with the people's original culture. St. Seraphim of Serov Church is located in Dillingham at the extreme north end of the Nishagak Bay in northern Bristol Bay at the confluence of the Wood and Nishagak Rivers. The periodical Russian Orthodox American Messenger notes that the utensils, furnishings, and icons from the abandoned St. Peter and Paul Church in Nishagak were moved to the churches in Dillingham and Portage Creek in 1964. So perhaps the Dillingham church was built around that time. Naknek is located at the north bank of the Naknek River at the northeastern end of Bristol Bay. In 1821, the original Eskimo village of Nagyak was noted by Captain L. T. Vasiliev. By 1880, the village was called Kenyak. It was later spelled Naknek by the Russian Navy. The Russians built a fort near the village, and fur trappers inhabited the area for some time prior to the U.S. purchase of Alaska. St. John the Baptist is a plain wood frame church, including both nave and sanctuary under its gable roof. Three onion domes recently added enliven the roof line and distinguish this building as a Russian Orthodox church. St. Nicholas Church is a historic Russian Orthodox church in the Alaskan native village of Nundalton. The congregation was established in 1896 at Old Nundalton. Its first building was constructed in that year. The building to the left was built between 1930 and 1933 and was moved when the whole community of Nundalton was moved to its present location. The current church in the center of the painting began construction in 1988 and it's approximately 40 feet by 52 feet. Nundalton is an Athabascan Indian village. The name means lake after lake in their language, and the village is situated along one of a line of lakes. Sandpoint is located on northwestern Popoff Island, off the Alaskan Peninsula. St. Nicholas Church was built in 1986, but closely resembles the previous church built in 1936. A gabled roof covers both sanctuary and nave, and entered through the base of the bell tower. The most recent information on the history of the Kashagoth Church states a new chapel was built in Kashagoth in 1906. The village was evacuated by order of the U.S. military as a precaution against Japanese invasion in mid-July 1942. The residents were moved to an evacuation camp at Ward Lake near Kachikan, where they were held until spring of 1945. When the survivors were finally transported back to the Aleutians, they learned that there would no longer be mail or shipping service to their village. Although a few people briefly tried to live there, most of the former residents ended up resettling in Unalaska. 
This is an old church that is either a later enlargement of the original church built in probably 1843 or a later 1800s replacement. The old church reflects the influence of traditional three-part Russian Orthodox ecclesiastical architecture in America expressed in the style of a log cabin. Balanced in the center, it's divided into three parts, the vestibule, the nave, and the altar chamber. Each section is built by squared logs with corners dovetailing and straight butt joints at points where the logs are shorter. Located about 25 yards from the banks of the Kuskokwim River, set in a fenced graveyard, some of the graves have been washed away by the river. The church in this picture was consecrated on December 4, 1975. The festival was added in 1976. Lower Kolskuk is located on the north bank of the Kuskokwim River, two miles downriver from Upper Kolskag. The Russian Orthodox residents of Upper Kolskag, a predominantly Roman Catholic village, moved to Lower Kolskag because of religious differences. The St. Nicholas Church Parish was founded in 1960. The village's first chapel, seen at the left in this painting, was built around that time. The new church at the right was built in the late 1970s and consecrated in 1981. The residents of Chicknick Lake retain close ties with its Aleut heritage and practice a lifestyle of living off the land. Spruce Island is known as the home of St. Herman, the first saint to be canonized on American soil by the Orthodox Church. St. Herman established an orphanage for native children on Spruce Island and made it his home sometime after 1808. He died in 1836 and was buried here with a disciple. The first chapel in present-day Tyanic Village was built between 1934 and 1936 and was expected to be consecrated in 1938. After gold was discovered at Resurrection Creek in the 1880s, Tyanic became a major disembarkment point for goods and people. The village moved to its present location, atop a bluff, when the old site near Tyonic Timber flooded in the early 1930s. The village of Perryville was founded in 1912 as a refuge for the Aleut people driven away from their villages by the eruption of Mount Katmai. The village was originally called Perry, but the ville was added to confirm the post office name established in 1930. The date when the church was built has not been documented, but was soon after the establishment of the community of Perryville. St. John the Theologian Church is a great two historic property. The property is associated with events that have made significant contributions to the broad patrons of American history. The St. Nicholas Chapel is a historic Russian Orthodox church in the native village of Ignugig. It is one of the region's smallest churches measuring 12 by 18 feet, with clapboard siding, metal gable roof, and a small shed roofed vestibule at one end. A detached bell tower holding five bells stands next to the church. The painting shows the old church built in 1929 on the left and the new church built in 1980 on the right. The present location of Nustulyak is the third site that villagers can remember. The village moved down river to the Molchotna area from the old village in 1918. Then in 1942, the village moved down river again to its present location. Stuyak appropriately means going down river place. The St. Sergius Church was built the same year as the village's last move. The Yupik Eskimo village of Ogegmuk, more commonly known as Ikigmuk, is located on the north bank of the Yukon River, 
some 30 miles from Marshall, Alaska. The Russian Orthodox Church had a strong presence within the village, according to Elder Alexander Isaac. The Church Brotherhood Council maintained a community affairs similar to any modern-day village council. So traditional Yupik values meshed with the church's influence provided a peaceful existence until the village was vacated in 1955. Alanajik is located at the head of the Wood River on the southeast end of Lake Alanajik. Wood River and Lake Alanajik have been used historically as summer fishing camps. Alanajik means wrong way home because natives returning to their homes along the Nushankak River would sometimes become lost in the fog and find themselves swept up the Wood River with the tide, inadvertently arriving at Lake Alanajik. Amchitka is a volcanic, tectonically unstable island in the Rat Islands group of the Aleutian Islands in southwest Alaska. The chapel was bulldozed in 1943 for construction of an airfield in a U.S. military campaign to recapture Kiska from the Japanese during World War II. The first chapel was built in 1881 and called Apostle Andrew the First Called. The second chapel was built in 1897 and called Resurrection which was still in use in 1921 with room for 200 people. In the mid-19th century, Yaktalak was one of the largest native villages in the Kodiak area. According to history, this is where Russians first arrived when arriving in Kodiak. This is the second church built at Russian Mission. It was constructed between 1891 and 1895. It was either torn down in 1930 or between 1938 and 1939. It was built by Father Zachary Belkov and financed by Father Belkov and his brother. Some of the liturgical items from that time are still being used today. This is the third church building at Russian Mission. It was constructed in 1938 and used until 1979. This is Russian Mission's fourth church building. Construction began in 1973, and it was consecrated in 1980. Russian Mission is located on the west bank of the Yukon River in the yukon Kuskokwim Delta. The present church at Nishangik was built in 1902 and was the third house of worship in this community, but has stood idle since 1963. This building presents an eclectic statement of one architectural tradition springing from the Balkovsky and Karluk churches. The introduction of more pronounced Byzantine details in the form of enlarged onion-shaped domes together with the niceties of a New England meeting house, even to the grandly executed sweeping entry stairs superfluously here but picturesque. The main structure of the church in this painting was built between 1883 and 1886. At that time, it was still classified as a chapel subordinate to the church at Russian Mission. In 1900, it was consecrated as a church, and within a few years, a tower at the front was added onto the earlier structure. The building was torn down in 1950s. The first mention in church records of a chapel in Quetzalcoatl is in 1914, when it was reportedly under construction but not yet completed. Port Moeller is a seasonal community on the Bristol Bay side of the Alaska Peninsula. There are no permanent residents. In the summer, however, there are about 150 temporary residents associated with the Peter Pan Seafood Processing Plant. The area is the site of the Hot Springs Village archaeological excavations, which indicates a human presence for over 5,000 years. St. Peter and Paul Chapel was built by Peter Andreev, but not as a church. It was donated to the mission by his son, Matvi. The village was named after the Andreev family who settled here and was originally called Clear River. 
Situated on Atka Island, 1,200 miles from Anchorage, it is the most isolated village on the Aleutian chain and the furthest west than any other community in the continental United States. It has been occupied for over 2,000 years. Russians came in 1747 and it was an important trade site. The original church was burned to the ground during World War II. Another was built in the 1950s, but the lumber was green and didn't last in the harsh climate. The church was rebuilt in 1996. New Helen is located on the north shore of Eliamna Lake at the mouth of the New Helen River, 320 miles southwest of Anchorage. The 1890 census listed the Eskimo village of Naham de Mute, meaning the people of Naham, at this location. The present name is an anglicized version of the original. The village was established in the late 1800s due to the bountiful fish and game in the immediate area. Kalignik is located on the left bank of the Nushagik River and lies 65 miles northeast of Dillingham. The community is located in the Bristol Bay Recording District and encompasses 97 square miles of land. This modest 1960 church contains notable icons and possibly the iconostats from the 1886 church at St. Michael. The church was built by a group of villagers and expanded in 1984 when the western third of the nave and the eastern third of the sanctuary were needed. In 1957, the icons were moved from the abandoned church at St. Michael to Ogimute a village just upriver from Marshall. 1960, when this church was built, the icons were moved to Marshall. As an unusual church without iconostats, Saints Constantine and Helen demonstrates the absolute minimal requirements for a church. Other churches may have begun with this form and had the sanctuary, iconostats, and vestibule added as the congregation grew. The date of the building is not clear whether the church was built in the 1920s with the roof replaced in the 1940s or whether the church was built in the 1940s. The community of Pilot Point developed around the fish salting plant established in 1889. First known as Pilot Station, the name changed when the post office was opened in 1933. Built in 1912, the church sits on a windswept hill at the edge of town, overlooking the cannery on the shore below. Napastiak is located on the east bank of the Kuskokwim River, along the Napastiak Slough, seven miles southeast of Bethel. The area has been historically occupied by Yupik Eskimos. Napastiak was first reported by the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey in 1867. Tuntutuliak is on the Kainak River, about three miles from its confluence with the Kuskokwim River and about 40 miles from the Bering Sea coast. The village's Yupik name means place of many reindeer. It was originally located four miles to the east and called Kainak, as noted in 1879 by Edward Nelson, who found 175 residents at the time. The community moved to its present site on higher ground and was renamed Tuntutuliak in 1945. Nunapachuk is part of the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta and sits on a swampy tundra. There are no roads to or within the village, and buildings are connected by a network of boardwalks. It is accessible by small aircraft, boats, and hovercraft, as weather permits. The presentation of the Theodokos Orthodox Church was established in 1946. Situated on the banks of the Yukon River, 20 miles west of St. Mary's, is the Yupik Eskimo village of Mountain Village, first established with the opening of a general store in 1908. The original name of the village was Azakarsarmut, which means the beginning of mountains north and south. A reference to the 500-foot Azarok Mountain the village sits at the base of. This mountain, though nowhere near as massive as anything in the Alaska Range, 
was the first mountain encounter by those traveling down the lower Yukon River. The people of Pitka's Point remain closely connected to their culture. Living a life of subsistence is an important part of everyday life. The first people of Pitka's Point called the community Nijiklik, meaning to the north. This small, isolated community was first recorded in 1898 by the U.S. Geological Survey. It was later named Pitka's Point in honor of a trader named Pitka, who opened a general store in the area for the Northern Commercial Company. The village sits on the Yukon River at the mouth of the Andreevsky River. Leaflock is located on the west bank of the Vychak River, 10 miles inland from Vychak Bay. It lies 56 miles east of Dillingham. In 1930, the first school was built and a post office was established in 1939. Quidjalangok is on the western shore of the Kuskokwim Bay near the mouth of the Kuskokwim River. It lies 77 miles southwest of Bethel. The area has long been occupied by Yupik Eskimos. The first recording of the village, however, was in 1927 on an Alaska map. According to the Historic American Buildings Survey Report of 1990, protection of Theodokos Church was built between 1948 and 1949. Aniak is located on the south bank of the Kuskokwim River at the head of the Aniak Slough, 59 miles southwest of Russian Mission in the yukon Kuskokwim Delta. Aniak is a Yupik word meaning the place where it comes out which refers to the mouth of the Aniak River. This river played a key role in the Placer Gold Rush of 1900 and 1901. King Salmon is located on the north bank of the Naknek River on the Alaska Peninsula, about 15 miles upriver from Naknek. At the beginning of World War II, the U.S. built an Air Force base that was maintained by the Federal Aviation Administration throughout the war. The community has grown as a government, transportation, and service center for the commercial red salmon recreational visitor industry. The Air Force Base closed in 1993. St. Nicholas Chapel is a historic Russian Orthodox church in Ekok. The small single-story wood frame building was constructed between 1918 and 1919 replacing an earlier church. If it weren't for its modest exterior religious symbols, it might be mistaken for a rural schoolhouse. The word Ekuk means last village down, reflecting that Ekuk is the farthest village south of the Nushakik Bay. The St. Nicholas Chapel in Pedro Bay is a historic Russian Orthodox church that was built in 1890. In 1973, it was in quite good condition and appeared unaltered from its original 1890 construction. Pedro Bay is located on the northeast end of Iliamna Lake at the head of Pedro Bay, 176 air miles southwest of Anchorage on the Alaska Peninsula. Stony River is located on the north bank of the Kuskokwim River, two miles north of its junction with Stony River. Also known as Moose Village and Moose Creek, it began as a trading post and riverboat landing to supply mining operations to the north. The first trading post was opened in 1930 and a post office was established in 1935. A Holy Resurrection Church in Belkovsky is significant as a striking example of a special type of Russian Orthodox Church architectural heritage with a pyramid-shaped roof over the central tower with a design following from the 1732 design of the Church of the Resurrection on the Moskava River in Kolomenskoy near Moscow, Russia. The church's design influenced the 1888 design of the Russian Orthodox Church in Karluk and also the 1906 Russian Orthodox Church in Ozinki. Eek lies on the south bank of the Eek River, 
12 miles east of the mouth of the Kuskokwim River. The village was originally located on the Acapulco River and moved to its present location in the 1930s. Attu, the westernmost piece of American territory and the largest island in the near Aleutian Islands is just under 1,100 miles from the Alaskan mainland. The island is about 20 by 35 miles in size and is the home of a small number of U.S. Coast Guard personnel operating in Lawrence Station. Some rough calculations show Attu to be around 281 miles from the dateline if it existed at the 180 degree longitude point. So if you are standing in Attu and looking west, you can at least in your mind see tomorrow. Kasigluk is a village of several hundred people, of whom nearly 80% are Russian Orthodox. Although there is no running water here, plans for plumbing the village are in the final stages. Even without running water, the village of Kasigluk is on a cutting edge in many respects. We can see that Kasigluk and other villages like it are far ahead of the mainstream when it comes to self-sufficiency and making use of new technology to provide villagers with a better life. St. Nicholas Russian Orthodox Church, located in the nearby Iklutna Heritage Park, was built in the 1830s and is the oldest building within the Anchorage area. Iklutna Historic Park offers a glimpse of a combined Russian Orthodox and Athabascan Indian settlement. On the church grounds are brilliantly colored native spirit houses which rise above the graves in the ancestral burial ground. The current building in use was reconstructed in the 1970s by Chief Mike Alex of Iklutna to take the place of the old St. Nicholas Church which stands directly across from it. Local tradition sets the construction of this small Russian Orthodox chapel at 1870 in the nearby village of Kanik, and around 1900 it was moved here to Eklukna. Judging from the architectural plan of the church, the date may be conservative. The structure is less formal than other late 19th century Russian Orthodox buildings that were typically framed and erected on a stylized ground plan. Rather, hand honed spruce logs were used in the exterior construction. The Holy Transfiguration of Our Lord Chapel was built in 1901, replacing an earlier chapel which had been built in 1846. The church was built to serve the community of Nanilchik, which was formed by the Russian America Company when it granted permission to some of the former employees to remain in Alaska in the mid-1800s. The church reflects this early Russian heritage of the town. It has a cemetery around it with graves marked with Russian Orthodox tri-crosses. As a National Historic Site, St. Nicholas Russian Orthodox Church has stood on a hill above Main Street welcoming returning sailors and visitors to Sedovia since 1891. The church has served as a place of worship, as a community center, and as an educational facility. The Alaska State Legislature funded a grant to restore the church in 1991. The St. Nicholas Church continues to serve as the Seldovia community focal point and a place of worship. The dominant feature of Tatiglik Village on Prince William Sound is the Blue Domed St. Nicholas Church. Fish processing and oyster farming contribute to the sustenance-based community. It's an Aleut village first reported in the 1880 U.S. Census with a population of 73. Holy Assumption Orthodox Church, also known as the Church of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, is a Russian Orthodox Church in Kenai Palencia Borough. Built between 1895 and 1896, the church was the second Orthodox Church at the site, replacing the 1849 structure. The church was built from logs in the Skov style in the shape of a ship. The bell tower was completed later in 1900. The interior contains an elaborate iconostasis. The current chapel was built in 1906. 
12 years after the main Holy Assumption Church nearby. The chapel is on the site of the original St. Nicholas Chapel, the first Russian Orthodox Church in Alaska built in 1840, the year Alaska became a diocese. Designed by Anchorage-based ECI Hyper Inc., the 1,500 square foot Nativity of Theodokos replaces temporary structures that had housed the congregation since 1964. St. Innocent Orthodox Cathedral was consecrated in 1994 as the Bicentennial Cathedral of the Orthodox Church in America, commemorating the arrival of the first Russian Orthodox ministries in Alaska in 1794. As Anchorage is the largest city in the state of Alaska, the hub of economic life and public services, the cathedral is a focal point of many activities in the life of the Alaskan Diocese and its 91 parishes. The parish of St. Tycone of Moscow Church is in South Anchorage, the largest city in Alaska. St. Tycone went to establish the Diocese of the Aleutians in North America after converting many people on the continent. Deemed an honorary citizen of the United States, he consecrated Orthodox churches in America during the early 20th century. St. Michael the Archangel Church was built in 1925. Despite the changes to its festival and to the side walls of the nave, this small church retains its character. Unusual among Alaskan Russian Orthodox churches, the sanctuary is incorporated into the mass of the nave, not marked by a distinct form on the exterior. New Czech was home to Aleut residents until 1928 when Peter Chomovsky, the chief of the village, died. Makri Chomovsky, the chief's younger brother, passed on many stories about the history of the village and about the people of Prince William Sound. Konstantinovsky Redoubt, built at New Czech on Hannerbrook Island in 1793, became the most important Russian trading post in the area. The earliest known settlers at Port Graham were Russians from the nearby trading post at Nanwalik. In 1850, the Russian-American company established a coal mine at Port Graham, but it was not considered economical and lasted only a few years. Port Graham became the site of a cannery and wharf according to the U.S. Geological Survey of 1909. St. Herman of Alaska Orthodox Church is a parish serving the Matanuska Susitna Valley. They are committed to living out the Orthodox Christian faith through participation in divine services as well as through worshiping Christ daily in their own homes and community. All Saints of America Antiochian Orthodox Mission was founded in Homer during the summer of 1996 with the blessing of His Eminence Metropolitan Philip, Father Paul Moses Jaroslaw and his family, along with Subdeacon Thomas Reese and his family, purchased a large house on a scenic bluff overlooking the city of Homer and began both a ministry for college kids as well as the development of an Orthodox mission. The village was originally the site of a Russian trading post called Alexandrovsky during the fur trade. It was later called Odinoka, meaning one-man post. A Russian Orthodox church consecrated to St. Sergius and Herman of Valam was built in the community in 1870, only three years after the sale of Alaska by Russia to the United States. A replacement church building was constructed in 1930 and is now designated as a National Historic Site. Established in 1894, St. Nicholas Orthodox Church in Juneau came into being when Tsar Alexander approved the formation of the Orthodox Missionary Society, whose purpose was to provide financing for expanding the Russian Orthodox religion and supporting missions in America. Upon learning of the new Orthodox community in Juneau, the Society sent architectural drawings money, and many religious furnishings to build and equip the new church. Slavic gold miners built the Russian Orthodox Church in Juneau alongside native clinkets and then filled the church with items sent from Russia. 
including chalices, icons, and candle stands that are still in use or on display in the church. The six large panels on the iconostasis are the original icons received from Russia. Yakutat is isolated on the low lands along the Gulf of Alaska, 212 miles northwest of Juneau and 225 miles southeast of Cordova. The original settlers are believed to have been ayak speaking people from the Copper River area who were conquered by the Clinkets. St. Michael's Cathedral is located right in the middle of downtown Sitka. It's only three blocks from the waters of the Pacific Ocean. The dome, the cross, and the bell tower can be seen from most vantage points in the town. The cathedral was constructed between 1844 and 1848. St. Innocent was the designer of the cathedral and built the clock and the original edifice. St. Michael's Cathedral is the principal physical representation of the Russian culture influence in the 19th century in North America. St. Nicholas Orthodox Church was established in 1929. It's been without a priest since the only clinket ever ordained in the Orthodox priesthood, Father Michael Williams, died in 1994. It is a Russian Orthodox Church with a distinct cross and a roof and an icon on the site of the church. The village of Bjorka is one of several native villages evacuated and never re-inhabited by the U.S. Navy during World War II. St. John the Baptist Church in Angoon is a historic Russian Orthodox Church that was built between 1928 and 1929 after a fire had destroyed a previous church in the parish at Killisnoo in 1927. This Clinket community is the only permanent settlement in Admiralty Island, located on the southwest side of Kutsnuhu Inlet. St. Sava Orthodox Church was built in 1903 on land donated by the Treadwell Gold Mine Company. The church, along with most of downtown Douglas, probably burned in 1937. Based on a 1910 estimate, Douglas was the largest city in southeast Alaska. St. John the Baptist Church in Killisnoo was destroyed by fire in 1927, and a congregation built a new church in Angoon. In the late 1800s, the Northwest Trading Company built a fish processing plant at Killisnoo, and many Clinket moved from nearby Angoon and other areas to Killisnoo to work for the plant. The plant was destroyed in a fire in 1928, and most of the residents left Killisnoo. St. Herman Church was founded in 1975, and is comprised of a diverse number of ethnic backgrounds, including Russian, Yupik, and Aleut, as well as many converts. Fairbanks is located in the heart of Alaska's interior, on the banks of the Chena River in the Tanana Valley. Nikolai has relocated twice since the 1880s and has been in this location since 1918. The village had a trading post and roadhouse during the gold rush. The chapel dates to 1915. Athabascan folklore says that Talita's residents are descendants from two sisters, survivors of an attack by another Athabascan group who fled from Mount McKinley area to Talita Lake where they discovered white fish at its outlet. The village of Talita is named after that lake. A Russian Orthodox Church, St. Basil the Great, was built in Old Talita in 1918. Natives of Kodiak purchased the entire collection, unveiling it in Kodiak on November 16, 2015, with the blessing of Father Innocent of Kodiak. The Kupo Collection represents the untold story of one of North America's most fascinating cultural phenomena. A 250-year account of Alaska's history captured in the paintings of one artist who labored for over 10 years to bring this story to life. Janina Kantemir's iconic work with the Russian Orthodox churches in Alaska has taken her 10 years of heartfelt devotion to complete. With the works portrayed in 110 paintings, she has created the most complete and unique visual record of one of the most significant parts of the native Alaskan culture. 
This is the largest art collection ever sold in the United States by a solo artist. As with many artists, she enjoys creating with more than one media, but oil painting is her passion. Her work has been showcased in numerous galleries and exhibits around the world. While Roger Pike was sharing his vision at St. Michael's Cathedral in Sitka, a deacon of the church asked to sit with him in the foyer of the cathedral. He was this very distinguished looking man in his mid-70s with his mitre head covering, long black robe and long white beard. He placed his hand on Roger's forearm and said, I want to tell you a story. About 40 or 50 years ago, Bishop Gregory and I set out to photograph all the Russian churches in Alaska. We had our own developing equipment and camera. We would go to the villages, photograph each church, and develop the film that night. Then we would go to the next village. When we got to number 46, we had to stop. He put his other hand on Roger's forearm and looked him straight in the eye. And with his eyes welling up with tears, said, For 40 years I have been praying for someone to finish this work. Now with tears running down both of their cheeks, he said, Thank you, Roger. This tells the whole story of the vision God gave Roger Pike and how important it is to the Orthodox Church and the great state of Alaska. Thank you.